Today is the last day of April 2019 and I'm going to talk about the first prune of Japanese maples that you need to do. It's hard to believe that a tree like this, so dense and absolutely profuse with leaves, all this has been produced in the last 30 days. 30 days ago, this tree hadn't got a single leaf on it and in the space of one month or 30 days, it is completely covered. Many of you will know that I love maples in particular and not only that, I love large bonsai. Although I'm not a large person, most of my trees are extra large. This tree, from the base of the tree to here, must be every bit four or four and a half feet. So I love my large bonsai. And just as an aside, there is no real uh, rule as to what is an ideal size for bonsai. In Japan, most of the trees are no more than 90 centimeter high or three feet high because most of the trees in Japan are put in shows and the alcoves have to be like a meter wide and uh, Japan generally doesn't have a lot of space so their trees are small. If you go to China, Taiwan and places like that, you will see bonsai about 20 feet tall. That means about four or five meter tall in large marble and granite pots. So different cultures have bonsai of different sizes. But this is my uh, preferred size of bonsai. I love large bonsai and I love maples. So what am I going to do with this one? Now maples are meant to be a very delicate looking tree. Again, I don't want to be sexist, but we usually refer to maples as feminine trees. That means they have got very delicate branches, very dainty, very beautiful, like what a pretty lady should look like. So maples are like pretty ladies. They've got all that beauty and we've got to bring that beauty out. Now, if a tree is allowed to grow very dense like this, you're not able to see through the branches and it just looks cumbersome with too much foliage. So maples, in order to be delicate, you've got to prune them so that you can see through the tracery of branches and they should look delicate. And this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you on two large maples and a couple of small ones because most of you will have small maples. So why don't you, I start with a small one first. Now, this is a Deshojo maple. And again, this one has produced all this beautiful leaf in the space of 30 days. And already it's quite dense. So what I will do is I will go through the process of pruning. Now this maple fortunately hasn't grown too much. It's got that nice conical shape. So I'm only going to take out the crossing branches and try and introduce as much layering as possible. That means there should be layers between the different branches. And that's all I'm going to do. Now you must be wondering, why do we waste all this lovely growth? And especially like this beautiful red one, why do you want to cut all that growth out? There are two reasons why we have to thin the maples out. And the first one is because if you let it become too dense, the inner twigs and inner small branches will not get enough light. And if they do not get enough light, they will die back. So you will get quite a lot of die back if you have inadequate light. Now this one, fortunately, is not so dense. I've only taken a few of the tips out. Very important to take the ends of the shoots out because if you don't take the ends of the shoots out, it will continue to grow longer and longer and the branches will get extended. So that one, I think that is enough for that tree. Maybe take that one out, maybe take this one out. So you can see through that. Maybe even take this one out. But don't scalp it and make it completely bald. Now this is also very dense. So you should try and identify the front. This is the front. 
Now, these could be treated as sacrificial branches because if you keep a lot of branches below, it will help to thicken the trunk, but the first branches are somewhere there. Again, if there are any crossing branches or branches that spring upwards, we get rid of them. Very weak branches, we also get rid of them. And again, just trimming it into the nice conical shape. That means I'm taking the tips out, the ends out. See, I'm trying to create layered branches here. So there's a layer here. This one, if I wanted to, I can take off as well. So you introduce some layers. And there as well, you can layer some of that and thin some of those. Don't be afraid to take out a lot of these thinner branches. It won't hurt the tree. So you can see some of these layers. I could take some of that, but I think I'll leave it for now to grow. So I've only dealt with the overall shape, in effect, and a few crossing branches. Now this mountain maple has been wired into an S shape. Now that's a lovely S shape, but you can't see the S because it's so dense. So what I will do is I will thin it a little bit so that we can see more of the S. The trunk has been wired into an S, but the branches have to be defined much more. On the inside of the curve, I will take that out because I don't need that. I can let this branch go and then wire it. Always remember that maples should be so light and airy that you should get the feeling of little birds being able to fly through the branches. That's the image that we try to create every time. The apex at the top, there's a lot of growth and I want to thin this a bit, otherwise it becomes too dominant on the apex. I should perhaps say something about leaf cutting because many people often ask me, should you leaf cut maples and by leaf cutting, will it produce a second crop of smaller leaves? Now, my answer to that is that I'm not a great believer in leaf cutting because by leaf cutting, the leaves don't necessarily get smaller the second time round. In fact, by leaf cutting, you can stimulate so much growth that the second crop of leaves can be bigger than the first crop. And never do it to a weak tree, do it to a strong tree. If the tree is strong, then it can take leaf cutting. If it's not strong, then by leaf cutting, you weaken the tree. So be warned. I leaf cut mainly on trees like the horse chestnut, which, which has large dinner plate size leaves. So you can see how much I've taken out already. If you wind your uh, video back, you can see what the before was like. So again, the main thing is to prune to the conical shape, take the tips of the growing shoots out, and that should be enough. And these are the branches that you should encourage to grow. And when they get firm, you can perhaps wire it in the correct direction. So this is all this year's growth. So in the last four weeks, we've had about six to eight inches. That is nearly about 25 centimeters of growth in the young branches. So that is how I would thin the tree. Now let's come to this big boy here. As many of you know, I am a very, very fast worker. This tree would probably take someone a whole week to thin, but I can do it in about half an hour, maybe even 20 minutes. So what do I do first? 
The first thing I do is to create the overall shape. By the way, I'll, although I've got quite a few tools, my favorite tool is really just the scissors. You can use the long handle twig shears, but I found that these supposedly, I think they're root shears, because the handle is so nice and comfortable to hold. This is my favorite tool at the moment, but as long as they're scissors, it's fine. You don't need branch cutters unless you're cutting a branch. So the first thing to do is to look at the overall shape. This one has got a good conical shape. So all the growing tips I will take out. So this is again what I would call sophisticated topiary. Nothing more than that. It's just topiary. But that's not all that I'm going to do. There's much more to it than that. But this is the starting point. It's amazing how much growth I've made because in the space of four weeks, some of these shoots are more than 30 centimeter, more than 12 inches long. And this tree being so heavy has not been protected in the greenhouse at all. It has stood out in the open right through the winter. And again, in this part of England, we've had temperatures of minus eight on two nights. And most of the winter is about four or five degrees centigrade. So I'm going round and just trimming the ends to get the outline. And I always like to stand back, stand back to see the overall shape. If you're too close to the tree, you don't get such a good idea as to what the overall shape is like. So from time to time, keep going back and then see that the overall conical shape is still there. A tree that is growing strong can stand the treatment that I'm going to do. I'm literally going to almost like pluck the leaves as if I'm plucking tea leaves. In fact, when people pluck tea leaves in the tea gardens, they take more care than what I'm going to do. So all I'm going to do is use my two fingers and go around and remove some of the leaves like that. I start from the top because if I start from the bottom and take the leaves off, by the time I get to the top, all the debris will be on the lower branches. So I'll start from the top. So just going around like this, what I call plucking tea leaves. You must be wondering why we do this as the first prune. Now, there are two reasons. The first is aesthetic, so that we have a much daintier look to the maple. And the second is horticultural, because by letting light in from removing too many of these leaves, we let the sunlight play on the twigs and branches and you get stronger twigs and branches. So in the long run, you get less dieback to the fine branches. And this is part of the process of creating the ramification. Many of you have heard about ramification. Ramification simply means the fine twiggery that you get on deciduous trees. So this is how we also create better ramification by removing some of the leaves. Now this is not really defoliation because defoliation, we remove the leaf from the petiole leaf by leaf. I'm just removing the leaves to thin the tree out. I 
I'm just judging by eye how much to remove. Once I begin to see through the twigs and branches, then I know that's when I think I've done enough. And just as an aside, I hope my colorful shirt is not distracting you. Some of you have commented that my shirt looks nice, but some have found it very distracting. And my Jamaican friends love me more for my shirt than for the trees. Now, there you go. Well, moving the leaves like this, I only do to the big trees. With small trees, there's not as much foliage, so you can take your time and maybe even do it with scissors if you wish. But I'm doing this by hand because it's a very fast way, quick method of doing it. I'm sure some of you will be horrified at what I'm doing, but I can assure you it works for me. And you can see the quality of the maples that we have here. Again, if I may reiterate, there's no such thing as a blue maple or purple maple as I've seen on some of these internet sites. And that fellow has stolen my YouTube video, you'll probably look at it and you will see that my hands and my fingers making various maples and groups, they are all my YouTube videos. So please, uh, you can respond to Facebook or YouTube and tell, tell them that they've stolen Peter Chan's YouTube videos. Right, I'm not quite there, but I'll go and have a look and see It's only tended a little bit, still got to do more. Of the deciduous trees, I think the maple is probably the only one that can stand this sort of treatment. I don't know of many other trees. If you look at Korean hornbeams or Japanese beech, they don't have as many leaves as maples do for the same size tree. So this method I only use for my maples what we call leaf plucking. Okay, now that I can see the twig structure, I can go in and remove some of the unwanted twigs. If we home in on this, you see the long twigs like this, I can take back upward pointing shoots like so, I can reduce so that I introduce layers between the maples, uh, maple uh, branches. So this is all part of the process of creating more and better ramification. So you can see the different layers that I've tried to maintain. Anything springing upwards, I'm going to take out. So I've done quite a lot of work on it. So despite me removing, I would say about 40% of the foliage. There's still a lot of foliage there, but I've certainly thinned it out and it needs it because if you didn't do it you will get some dominant branches growing and light will not be able to get into the twigs and in the long run you will get more dieback from too dense a foliage and you can also get very coarse branches so I'm controlling growth from many many different points of view so that is that one so that is how I leave it now because I pruned it and the tree has not been repotted this year. This has not been repotted. So there's no danger of feeding it straight away. So what I would do, I will sprinkle quite a lot of fertilizer on this tree uh, and I will let it grow again. 
and this is the first flush of growth you get in April. You get another flush of growth around end of June, early July. It's like your roses. Those of you who grow roses in the garden, you will know that they have a first flush of flowers in June and then a second flush in August. But with maples, you get the first flush of growth in April, May, and then the second flush of growth, after you pruned it, you will get it in about June, July time. So this is how you would care for maples to increase ramification and to give it the more light and airy look to the tree.